world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the cost of net zero because there's a lot of talk about the cost of net zero. And I think we're looking at the wrong side of the argument here because if the eco loonies are correct, then no cost is too high. Uh, if we really are going to burn up in the next 10 years or something, then we, we'd pay anything for that. So the, the real question that we should be looking at is whether man-made climate change exists at all. And I wanted to just point out a couple of facts for people to list, to have a look at and examine themselves to get their head around this. Um, the temperature of outer space is minus 270 degrees centigrade, which is pretty damn cold, Right. So if we get to 30 degrees centigrade on planet Earth in a, on a nice sunny day, it means that the, the sun is warming the planet by 300 degrees centigrade, approximately. If it didn't, we'd just be uh, a little rock drifting around in space, a frozen rock, and there'd be no life on the planet at all. So the real issue here is that the sun is warming the planet by a 300 degrees centigrade from a distance of 93 million miles we can't get our heads around a distance like 93 million miles it's so, it's so enormous we can't imagine it but it, it's warming us by three times the temperature of boiling water from 93 million miles away that's what's determining our climate and and indeed of course as I said earlier, we've had climate change since time began. We will always have climate change. And there are multiple factors. And you've, I think, really, I, I'm not a scientist, uh, but uh, you've just referred to some statistics there. The, the truth is that so many things impact on it, whether it's solar variability, as you, I think, have just been inferring, uh, whether it's sea level oscillation, whether it's, as someone else earlier uh, referred to, volcanic activity. There, there are multiple factors that impact on climate change about... Mu much of which we actually don't know that much, I think, Peter. Yes, we know that um, in terms of man-made emissions, we all want cleaner air, we all want to look after our environment, but it's about making sure that what we do is, is affordable and here in the UK is proportionate. Well, of course, I mean, I think everyone, you've got to separate the, the pollution aspect from the climate change aspect. Nobody wants to have uh, plastic bags floating around in the oceans. Absolutely. We all want clean air. Uh, it's nice to breathe clean air, but that's nothing to do with climate change. Uh, in, if you look at Greenland, the, the, the Vikings used to uh, grow crops on Greenland. Uh, it was called Greenland because it's green. It was not called Whiteland as it would be today when the snow's down. So we used to grow grapes in the north of England, the Romans did, for, for making wine. We don't do that anymore. This is all before man was driving around in diesel cars. But if, if you think lagging your roof uh, and, and doing the silly things that we're told we should do, it's going to make a difference to the climate. That's as nutty as King Canute saying that he's going to stop the tide coming in. You just can't do it. And Boris actually said at the COP20, whatever it is, meeting, uh, this is it, we're, we're going to stop climate change. He, he, he did. Used those he, words. And, and, and that is the extraordinary misconception that I think the political leaders are deliberately imposing on people, thinking that you can stop climate change. Yeah. But, I mean, that is, that is just, uh, it's just untrue. It's complete denial of reality. Peter, would you like, therefore, a referendum on net zero so we can have a grown-up national debate about this? Of course, absolutely. And what about your friends, Peter? What are they saying about this? How aware are they of the net zero agenda? I think everyone is aware of it, and everyone is aware that it's crazy. Nobody voted. I, I don't have any friends who are, uh, you know, sellotaping themselves to, to motorways or anything like that. That's, it's not... I, I don't know anybody who's, uh, who's for this uh, this green agenda but it's just the notion when you when you look at the fact that space is minus 270 degrees centigrade the the, the sun is already warming the planet by 300 degrees so we need global warming if we didn't we would just be a little rock there'd be no life here well it is interesting isn't it peter and thanks for those thoughts uh, that statistic i read out earlier the nhs is concerned that two and a half thousand people uh, more may be dying uh, because of heat waves in the UK, and yet another part of government, the ONS, is saying that actually uh, milder win winters, i.e. a bit of warming, is actually saving 25,000 lives every 
single year. So maybe actually uh, people are looking at this completely the wrong way round. Peter, thank you very much for your thoughts. Lots of tweets just coming in uh, with some goodwill messages to the Queen. God bless the Queen. Get well soon, says Les. And of course, we all share that sentiment about that concerning news that the Queen has COVID. Stay with us into the third hour. We'll be talking to Harriet Sargent about the missing children, the collateral damage of lockdown here on Ty's Talk at Talk Radio. Good talk. Hot talk. Talk. Bold talk. Talk Radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk Radio.